Hey there guys, so I know that May isn't technically over, but this is my video slot that comes right the closest to the end of May because on Friday I have an ARC review coming out and that's a video and I can't move that. So you know why this is happening now and I'm not sad because actually May has been a great month for my reading. I talked about how in April I had that text wrap up because my April wrap up was disgusting. I didn't get anywhere in my pop sugar challenge. I was still at 10 of 40 books in that and I only read four full books in April and that was so depressing. I have come back in May. I have read eight books and five of them, that's right, five of them counted for my pop sugar challenge. Some of them were planned that way, some of them weren't, but it all works out in the end. And a bunch of the reviews that I've done this month have all been video reviews, so you'll be able to check out the eye to see what I've thought of a bunch of these books, so I'm so excited about that. So the first full book that I finished in May was Faithiest, How an Atheist Found Common Ground with the Religious by Chris Stedman, and this was one of the final memoirish pieces that I had for my Spiritual Journeys class, yes, while I was still in school. And this was one of the few books that we read that actually consciously engaged in the idea of pluralism and interreligious dialogue. Before that, it had all been more talking about a religion, and then in class we would use those discussions to think about how it would work in an interreligious dialogue sense. This book took that on full steam ahead, and I really, really appreciate that, also because it is you know, an atheist perspective, and I think a lot of times when you think interreligious dialogue, you don't think atheism, because atheism means no god, but it is something that people believe, and it is something that has to be included in that discussion. So, really excited to finish off that class's big books with this one. It was a little bit preachy, pun intended, but it was good, and I think that if interreligious dialogue from an atheist perspective is something that you're interested in, this is a really, really good book to pick up. I did not review it on my blog and it did not count for a pop sugar challenge, but does not mean that it is not a worthwhile read. After Faithiest came a book that I think I've reread four or five times since it originally came out, which is hilarious because it's a huge book, and that is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. I know, you've heard me talking about this. I did a spoiler-free review of this right after it came out where I just basically talked about how this is still my favorite book so far of 2016. Uh, and then I also did a From the Notebook video talking about how there is not actually a love triangle in this book, despite how some people have said that there is. And that video is really important to me because it talks about how Sarah actually managed to reclaim the Beauty and the Beast story for a strong female character, which is really hard. And the kind of romance in this book is just so important, especially if you read a lot of, like, YA bad romance. So those videos are really important to me if you want to check them out. Um, besides probably being my favorite book so far of 2016, this also counts for my Pop Sugar Challenge for Based on a Fairy Tale. I originally wasn't sure if I was going to count this as my Based on a Fairy Tale book because this is the one that kind of steps away from the Beauty and the Beast story, but it does so many important things with that fairy tale that I couldn't not have this be my pick for that part of the Pop Sugar Challenge. Heading back to what I think is my last school book in a wrap-up ever, unless I, you know, go back to grad school somewhere years down the line, um, I did read The Art of Stillness by Pico Iyer. Oh, The Art of Stillness, Adventures and Going Nowhere by Pico Iyer. Don't want to forget the lovely subtitle. This is a TED original, and I read it for my Spiritual Journeys class, and we didn't even have class that day because the whole point of this is to go nowhere, to meditate and go nowhere. So I read this in one sitting because it's very short. This is my Pop Sugar Challenge pick for a book under 150 pages. This book is actually only 66 pages long, and a bunch of that is actually some very, like, double-page spreads of sunsets. So I didn't review this on my blog because it was only 66 pages and there isn't really a lot to it. I think that it's interesting. It talks a lot about how we spend so much time thinking that we need to go somewhere to relax that we don't think about where we already are. So that was interesting and it was a very meditative little read, but 
you know, not very depth fish. So, but yeah, did get my under 150 pages tick on the pop sugar challenge, so that was really helpful. I do not have my copy of this anymore because it came from the Ithaca Library, but I did also read this month A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki, and that was a journey in and of itself because I was supposed to have read that back in April for a buddy read, didn't have time, so I had to rush read it for the joint review that Michaela and I did a couple of weeks ago. So you can check that out if you haven't already. It's a really good review where Michaela and I agree on some things, butt heads on some things, and try and convince each other to see our point of view, but in the end, you know, kind of come to a better joint understanding, but also hold firm on our own opinions in under 10 minutes. So very worthwhile to watch. It was a very good book. I was actually kind of annoyed by how much I liked it because I didn't expect to especially with like literary fiction plus the writing style and the kind of fourth wall meta pushing kind of thing but it worked and it didn't work for me but in the end I did really enjoy the book overall. A Tale for the Time Being was also a pop sugar challenge pick for a book set on an island because both protagonists come from a kind of island as long as you can still count Japan as an island I think that still kind of counts even though it's a rather large island. But uh, both of them were on their own islands, so that's what I'm calling it as. Speaking of books I don't have anymore, we also read Death Vigil by Seven Shezik in May. That's what month it is, May. I say we because this was the pick for our last in Bibliomancy episode. So it was Taylor's pick. It was a graphic novel, so it also became my Pop Sugar Challenge pick for a graphic novel. And it was a very interesting hour-long drunk book club discussion that we had on that. I actually get angry somewhere in the middle, and I haven't done that since the last book Taylor picked with art. So that was really interesting. But we had a great debate about comics versus graphic novels versus, you know, if you're not a reader with the expectations correct to, you know, serialized comics or graphic novels, how does that change your reading experience, and also just like a great discussion of the book itself and noses. So I would recommend checking that out if that's something that you're interested in because it was a fun discussion and I do get angry, so it's just very amusing to watch all around. If you saw the weekly wrap-up that Michaela and I did, then you will not be surprised to see Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare on this list. I just finished this a little while ago, and I liked this a lot more than I thought I was going to. I did do a spoiler-free review of this, so you can check that out for more, but just know that if you're worried about this being really romance-heavy and annoying in that way, there is an issue with romance in this novel, but the emotional weight of this book is the best written emotional family, you know, heart-wrenching kind of stuff that I have read in Cassandra Clare's work so far. So really like this a lot more than I was going to, and it's a good thing because it was my pop sugar pick for a book over 600 pages. I read it in two sittings, but still over 600 pages. So if you are a fan of Cassandra Clare, this is still a very worthwhile pickup, I promise. Speaking of books, I literally just finished. I also read in May Jodie Meadows' The Mirror King. This is the sequel and final book in the Orphan Queen duology. There are four novellas in the middle that I'm still going to try and get a hold of, but um, I haven't read those novellas yet, and I don't know if that's part of the reason why this book was unsatisfying to me, but I haven't reviewed this book yet, and I plan to, but let's just say that it wasn't what I expected and very plot convenient and that's very sad to me because I love Jodi Meadows Incarnate series a lot and I loved the idea of this but it didn't work for me. So I will talk about more in the review that I end up doing later on in June. And finally the last book that I'm reading in May, and please remember that I'm doing this early so I might kind of be lying, and I actually haven't finished this book yet, but I am going to count Bone Gap by Laura Ruby as read in May. I am at 68% of the way through that book right now, but our Bibliomancy for Beginners opening episode with that book is on Monday, Memorial Day, 
tonight if I get this video out on time. Let's hope. Um, but so far, not thrilled. And not thrilled in a way where I can say, well, I don't like this, I don't like this. Not thrilled in a way that I'm just bored. Like, it's a fine book. It's fine. I'm just bored. But yeah. I don't know how I'm going to participate in that book club episode very well because I am literally just bored. That's literally my one, my one thing about that book so far. Which is sad because it was like a Pulitzer finalist and a National Book Award finalist or winner or something. So I'm just like, I, I expected more than I'm getting so far. But again, only 68% of the way through. So make sure you check out our book club episode to see if I changed my tune at all. So those are the eight books that I read in May, give or take something I may read in one sitting after this video is, you know, filmed. But I have gone from 10 books out of 40 books in my Pop Sugar Challenge read, which was my number from literally March, to 15 out of 40 read and I look forward to putting a huge dent in the rest of those books this summer because now I have the time to actually read what I want to read as opposed to reading for school and I'm not doing homework and I'm just working and working on some certifications and stuff like that. Speaking of certifications, I did promise you guys a little bit of a life wrap up uh, in my Lady of Midnight review and so just briefly as you can tell, I'm home now. This will hopefully be the view that you guys get for the next little while. This is in front of the singular bookshelf that I have, and I've just put this back together, and there's three crates stacked up this way that you can't quite see of books because I've acquired a lot of books. So I'm actually thinking of maybe doing a bookshelf tour next week, so we will see if I can get that together and show you guys, because I filled this with all of my TBR books for the most part, except for, you know, some of my favorites, like my Sarah J Mass books are on the shelf and stuff like that. Um, I am here for the summer until hopefully August 15th, where I will hopefully be leaving for South Korea. That is still a little bit up in the air, but I can say that I successfully passed my interview with the South Korean government, so they are looking to place me now. So it is just uh, looking forward to seeing where I get placed. And if Taylor from Bibliomancy for Beginners is coming with me, he has not had his interview yet. So again, a lot of things up in the air, but that is my plan right now because I did graduate uh, last Sunday and trying to do post-grad life. So those are my plans right now. You will obviously get updated on them as they change because moving to South Korea for a year will be a big impact on this blog. And while it will generate more content, it will also mean that Michaela and I will be struggle busing even more than we already are to get you guys our joint content. So you will of course be kept abreast of all that stuff and fingers crossed for the future. That has been my May wrap-up, guys. Uh, look forward to the Bibliomancy for Beginners opening episode tonight. And here we go. Summer has come. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye!